So, hello and welcome to the Code Maven channel and uh, to my meeting uh, about the Crystal Programming Language. Uh, my name is Gabor Sabo. Probably most of you don't know me. Um, I've been programming for I'm almost forty years. A lot of many years to Perl, a um, little less uh, Python, and I've started to learn Crystal about sixty days ago, and. Um, the way I learn, a pro and, and part of what I do as a job, I teach programming languages, uh, Perl and Python and, and all kinds of other things, version control to all kinds of companies. Uh, so when I, I start to learn a programming language, one of the things I do is start um, writing my slides and trying to teach uh, whatever I already know. This is extremely useful for me because um, uh, I learn a lot from trying to explain uh, stuff, and then I figure out, oh, it's something that's, that I don't uh, clearly understand. I learn a lot from the feedback from, from, from the students or from you, the, the audience, um, I, either from their questions or that they fix uh, uh, whatever I say and, 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 and so on. Uh, if, question if I have any experience from other statically type languages, um, I guess Go, that would fit there. And a long time ago, I was writing C, but uh, that's only at the university level. So I don't have a lot of practical, uh, and with Go, I only have a little experience, okay? Um, I, I ran a course on Go, quite similar to this one, but then I didn't continue on, 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 on uh, teaching more. Anyway, um, another disclaimer here on the course, uh, of course, it's far from being ready. So lots of I'm going to teach uh, all kind of things that probably are not the best way to write it in Crystal. And definitely a lot of things are going to be missing here. So if you're watching this video, then make sure that you check if there is a newer edition of the video uh, later on. Um, and if you're here, I'm glad that you're here. And then please forgive me if uh, I'm not, um, if this is not the perfect uh, course yet, but it's just yet, okay? So let me share my uh, my screen and show you the, the slides and what I already have and explain you uh, explain everything to you here. Uh, so that's strange here, sorry. I'll have to change a little bit how this works. Uh, okay, so... This is where I have my slides. I put the link to the uh, into the chat and it's gonna be under the, the video as well. If this is on the Code Maven website, if I go actually one level higher, then you can see lots of lots of uh, series of, uh, of slides. Uh, the, big, the first one here is Python. It's ordered by the number of pages. So you can see like 2000 pages of Python and Crystal is here. It has now 363 pages. Um, one more thing that's important to know is that it, if we go to uh, this GitHub uh, project, I also put this in the slides, in the chat room, uh, this is the source code of all of my slides, including, if you look at this directory, including the crystal slides, and of course, all the other things. And if you go clone this, somehow download it, then inside the crystal, uh, there are the MD, file, MD files, the markdown files, except the readme. These are the chapters basically in the course. And in the examples subdirectory, there are going to be the examples that are used in the slides. I'll point uh, this out later on, okay? So a little bit of introduction. And, and this is like a, the first part of the course. I'll go as far as I can do. Uh, and if uh, you, you start feeling that's way too much, then then stop me or um, and I will stop in anyway up in within an hour or so uh, and then I'll schedule other meetings for later on uh, for the further parts there are a lot of parts I was working on actually the struct part somewhere I don't know where it is now um, I lost it now somewhere there is a a part about struct yeah, here it is. I was working on this one lately, uh, but um, yeah, this introduction is also getting to be too too long. Anyway, it's Crystal language. Uh, first, I should probably say a few words why why to learn Crystal. Uh, 
the best thing is actually going to the website of Crystal and there you have a couple of ideas why to learn Crystal. I asked it on the forum of Crystal, what do other people say about why they would recommend Crystal to other people. Uh, the, the main idea is that it's, uh, it has a nice uh, lightweight, let's say syntax, similar to what Ruby has. And uh, um, Ruby is, has a nice syntax. Uh, and on the other hand, it's compiled, and so it's uh, fast. It's uh, much faster than uh, the other uh, dynamic languages, let, let, let's say. So it's closer to, to uh, supposed to be closer to, to C, and it can provide all kinds of nice features. Okay, so you can visit the website here. Let, let's check it out. Uh, and then if you scroll down, it, says it has an example of syntax. It talks about the type system, that there, there is a type system and it's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the, the, this is actually, actually a nice, nice thing. So this is a code, this is come some, some code that in other, in some of the dynamic languages, this can easily um, um, create a problem. So you have, you assign a value to a variable, but you don't always do that. Let's say there you have a condition that randomly sometimes executes and sometimes none. Of course, it can be that uh, there is some code piece of code that only that this piece of code executes every day except uh, New Year's New Year, because it's an accounting software. So the first January the first, you have to uh, execute some other code, and then uh, most of the times you assign the value, and then this works. Uh, but once in a while, once a year, you don't assign this value, and then then this raises an exception because the variable is not, uh, doesn't exist. Crystal will find this out, this problem at compile time. So you won't be able to ship your code um, uh, with uh, such, such problem, okay, with uh, such a bug. Of course, other, some other languages won't even allow you to write this kind of code. But um, for example, Python, you can easily write this code and then it will be a problem. Uh, macros, uh, these are compile time constructs that actually generate more code. So it can be used to add uh, getters, setters, uh, debugging statements, whatever, all kind of interesting things, um, auto generate uh, code um, that uh, I already used a, a few of them. Uh, that was nice. Um, there's a concurrency, concurrency model, so you can uh, actually use uh, several do do several uh, things at the same time. C binding, I haven't touched it yet. Um, and then there is dependency management, so you can install other third-party libraries, what they call crist uh, shards in the in in Crystal. There are somewhere between a thousand and five thousand uh, third-party uh, uh, libraries. Uh, the number is so the bigger the, the bigger the difference is so big because. There are, there's no single central repository for the uh, crystal shards, uh, and, but there are like two or three or four websites that try to collect them, and they all have very different uh, numbers. It all compiles down to LLVM, so the, this virtual machine that other, other languages uh, like Go, sorry, some other languages uh, use. Um, what else? So these are just the same notes that we have on the website. These are the two links. So there is uh, there is the crystal shards. So this is like uh, one of the this is one of the places, and actually there is a third one that I forgot to mention here. Uh, this is one place to find these shards. You can see here six thousand uh, listed. This is just a thin layer over GitHub, and it actually doesn't list. I think. Uh, shards that are not on GitHub. So not, there are, for example, on GitLab. There are a few, most of them are on GitHub. Uh, there is the shard box um, and my career in, in, in Crystal started by writing uh, something like this, but then I stopped it uh, when I found out about shard box. So this, this all, only risks uh, 1,100, but it is they are categorized manually. So that can be useful, uh, and then you can help categorize them uh, manually in, in a GitHub repository. And then you can see here lots of interesting parts, various shards. So for example, database access, Camel, Lucky, and Amber are um, web um, frameworks, 
redição e will will recognize a few of them and then you can search for other ones and there is another thing uh, in order to um, to install these third party packages you need to have a file called shard.yaml and in there you you list these uh, dependencies you can start creating this yaml file either ma manually or by running shards in it uh, on the command line shards is the command that would install the the third party library similarly to the cpan or pipe or pip in python um, or um, npm in, in node this is how for example the shard yaml looks like uh, it, you say what is the name of your project actually if you start writing a project it's, it's a good idea to have a shard uh, yaml where you will list all the dependencies that you're using but also you list the name of your project the version number of your project you can list the author, the description of your project, and the dependencies. The dependencies look a little bit strange. You give it, you give the name of the dependency that, as I understand, must be the same as, as uh, here. But I'm not, actually, it's not the same. It's not always the same. Okay, as, as, I can, as I can see here. So this is sort of the name of the of the of the project. I haven't. I think I haven't figured out yet how you actually know what is the name of the project. Then in which storage it's it's found so it's github i don't know what to, to to call this it could be github it could be gitlab it could be just git and that would be a local uh, git repository uh, so this is the type of git repository and then this is the uh, actually repository so th this would be on github.com slash crystal uh, dash ameba slash ameba and this would be some other thing and then you can have depend dependencies and you can have the de development dependencies and you can have a license. You should have a license. Okay, so that's what the, what the shard YAML looks like. Um, installing Crystal, I don't have too much to say about it. There is this link. Uh, you can download Crystal for the compiler uh, for all kinds of operating systems and platforms. So you can do that. Uh, I played around with doing it in Docker, and uh, at the beginning it was it was fine. But at the eventually I installed Crystal natively on my on my Ubuntu. Uh, so if you would like to do with the Docker root, then you can just say Docker run uh, the Crystal lang slash Crystal. So what I did is I created this file called Crystal, and this was the content. Okay. Um, Someone is using the ASDF version manager to install Crystal. Whatever, okay, whatever you like. Okay, I, I, I at one point I decided, okay, I don't want to put anything on my computer except of the Docker, so let's uh, do this one. And then this would be the command to run any Crystal program. So this would you you would get the the name of the file, uh, and then it will just run that Crystal. Um, but uh, uh, because of the extra start of the of the Docker container, it was a little bit slow and whatnot. So I I decided that uh, that I just installed Doc, uh, Crystal natively. Okay, so that's sort of the background. Let's get with some code. Uh, the extension of Crystal, the standard that people usually use, is .cr. Here is my first code. Put uh, and then in double quotes I put some string. Hello world. Usually. Puts is for stands for put string or print string, I guess. I don't know. Put string. Uh, this will automatically print to the standard output and automatically add the new line. Uh, so let's see what happens. So what can I say here? Okay, I mentioned you the the the, ex, uh, the exercises are that I mentioned that there are examples are here in the Git repository. So when I looking at the slides, you will see sometimes file names. And this is the example, and this is coming from here. And this is also the uh, link. So if I click on this file name, then I actually get to the Git repository where that file is. If you are interested, if you would like to send, send me a pull request or get the raw, raw version of the file without cloning the whole thing. Locally, I have it uh, in this directory. The, the slides repository is here and the crystal subdirectory is here. So I have the examples and it's called intro hello world.cr okay and then i can run crystal and uh, this is how it looks like okay so it takes quite a long time at the beginning because 
uh, the compilation phase. So the way it Crystal works is that first it compiles the program and then runs it. And the compilation fail is, phase is still relatively slow and uh, it's still not part of the emphasis. Um, um, they're not emphasizing that uh, work on the, on the speed of the compilation. It will be faster at one point, uh, but it's, I think uh, it took uh, about a second to second and a half uh, to compile this code. Maybe it was a little bit uh, longer earlier when it started to run Crystal the first time. Um, it's way too much for, for the for a Hello World Perl program, but as you can see, it prints the Hello World to the screen and the new line, and that's it. So this is how you can run a Crystal. Actually, Crystal, Crystal, Crystal minus minus version would uh, show me the version number, okay, of, of Crystal and my operating system. Um, okay, so before uh, we get further, uh, okay, actually, okay, this is how you run it. That's what uh, we have. Before we get further in the code, let me show you what you will do when your project is ready and you would like to run it. So you you can compile it manually uh, because what what when you run this this way, when you run this way, then it compiles to a temporary file and then it I guess it deletes the temporary file. But if you'd like to distribute it, then you run crystal build name of the file, and then you can give it various flags. But one of them is the name of the of the output. Okay, so let's try this one. And uh, yes, because the file is, I need to give the examples intro, and then the full pass of the file, and then it now created a file called hello. This is the file, and if I run this file, this prints out hello world, and then that's that's already pretty fast. Okay, so this is how you would uh, generate your code, and I'm not sure if there is cross, cross compilation already, but you can uh, compile it to various operating systems, uh, at least if you have the operating system. But maybe there's already cross compilation, or it's in the work. I'm not sure about that. Um, Anyway, I ran some uh, time measurements just quickly to, so I'll have some idea. Um, actually, there are some more that I forgot to share it here. So time crystal, the hello world, it took me 1.1. I guess it's now slower because uh, of the zoom uh, is also taking up some of the CPUs and the recording, I guess, whatever. So this is uh, the time uh, when I just ran uh, through Crystal directly. This is the time of compilation. This is the same time, basically. That's pretty close. And then running it uh, just directly is, is much faster, of course. I measured. Uh, let me try to, try, try to do this. Perl minus E say hello world. OK, so this would. Is, is, is much faster, okay? It's faster. Of course, this is just hello world, okay? Uh, if I, on the other hand, if I write it by uh, time, uh, Python minus C um, print, no, this one, I need this code here. Hello world. Okay, so this one also fast, but it's, it's, it's slower. And if I say time, uh, Ruby minus E puts here, right? That's also puts. And then I say, hello world. This is also relatively slow, OK? Uh, but actually, we don't really care how fast the hello world is. Man, that's not a really important uh, factor. It's uh, when we look at speed, it's going to be much more in interesting uh, for a much more reasonable project, not just uh, Hello World. The interesting part is, is how fast you can start running your code uh, and what is the time you need to do from, you, you go from edit to debug, edit, debug, edit, debug. And, and that was one of the big reasons that dynamic languages were so uh, well received 20, 30 years ago, uh, as opposed to the compiled languages because that, that loop was much faster. So for Crystal, it's a little, relatively not that fast yet. 
Uh, okay, go on with this. Print. By the way, just if you have any questions, just type in your questions in the chat room. I'll try to answer. Or if you have comments, that's also good. Um, all right, someone mentioned the, the, the awesome list. Yeah, let me... Uh, with optimization flex. I haven't tried the optimization flex. Anyway, this is the this is the website with the awesome uh, crystal. I think that the, the shard box includes this, uh, the data from here, but I'm not sure. Okay. Ah, so there is a flag called release. And uh, the, the point is that uh, uh, the speed of the, the runtime speed, I'm not so worried about that for now. And way more important for me, the development time, the the, the, the speed of, okay, I'm editing and running, editing, running without all the compilation and all the, maybe the release flag that would make the runtime faster, but I'm in the, during development, I'm interested in the, in these cycles. Um, of course, yeah, uh, definitely for, for the long time for production, it's important to make it even faster. Uh, okay. Print uh, as opposed to put, it uh, doesn't, include a new line. So if you would like to actually print something without a new line, then print is the one for you. And, but then if at the end you want to include a new line, just put the backslash N there, and then you will also have the new line. So that's about just print is longer than puts. Okay, so also if you have a couple of things you would like to print and you haven't learned other ways yet, then if you put a comma between the values, uh, for print, that would insert a sp uh, nothing between the two, actually. Uh, and sorry, an empty string. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it would include an empty string between the two, I think. Um, and um, right, yeah, so it will include nothing between the, the two. Puts, on the other hand, will include a new line between every two values. So definitely, prob or probably, Hello, print is better for, for printing these multiple values, but there, is, there are better ways to do that anyway. So one of the better ways is to interpolate uh, the values, uh, similar to how you can interpolate in Perl by just putting in a variable, or in Python, there are the F strings. In uh, Crystal, you can put in this hash mark and then curly braces, and you don't have to make any special anything special about the string and you don't have to say anything special about them. And then you put in the variable name and the crystal will automatically embed the value of this variable, whether the original variable was a string or a number doesn't really matter. And it will embed the value into the string. So now the, the string itself will be hello foobar, exclamation mark, and puts already gets this new string. And of course, embedding several of these things uh, I guess that makes the code uh, more readable at the end, okay? Uh, about strings, by the way, they just always use double quotes. Single quotes is something else that we'll discuss later. It's just a character. Um, double quotes is, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, two, it's calling two str, uh, two str or two s. It's, it's the string, stringification. So what, what the interpolation does stringification before it does. Actually, you can also put in any expression here so it can calculate. Um, I guess it's quite similar to, to what Ruby does. Wait a second, where am I here? Okay. So just more about the interpolation here. I have a variable with, which is a string, a floating point number, an integer, a Boolean value, okay? Uh, Crystal has special uh, values for Booleans and I can put any of them inside of these uh, hash mark and curly braces. I can even put here an expression, okay? A mathematical expression or calling a function or anything you would like. And Ruby will embed the values here and here it will be a, a, a do the computation, execute the code and embed the value there. And here too, the, the true is, uh, the true uh, Boolean value is stringified as, as true. Escaping, uh, okay, so uh, here, this is, this, is, this is the example. So I would like to, do, to put in hello, and then in, the name would be in quotes. Now, as long as I put the 
name in single quotes. I, I, this is this is how I would like how to, how I want it to look like. Okay, so on, in the output, I would like to have these single quotes or double quotes around the name. And if it if I want single quotes, that's easy because the string is with double quotes, and then I can put single quotes around it, and it's okay. If I would like to have double quotes, that's of course bad because now I have to escape the double quotes. In some languages, you could put in single quote around it, and then it doesn't matter because the quotes are different. But in in Crystal, the single quotes have different meanings, so you don't use them. On the other hand, you can use the this notation. Uh, these alternative quotes. So you put a percentage sign and then an opening something, and then at the end, till the end where you have the closing of the same thing. So this can be parentheses, curly braces, square brackets, I guess some other things, I'm not sure. Okay, probably all the pairing paired uh, things. And then once you have this, now you don't have double quotes as the uh, delimiters of the string. So now you can use the double quotes inside freely without the uh, escaping of them. Okay, and then all three will end up with this with the same output where we have double quotes around the, the name. Debugging printing. Okay, so uh, I don't know how about you. I actually haven't tried uh, any live debuggers for, for Crystal yet. Um, but even if I had, in many cases, I just use prints and on the other hand, uh, write a lot of tests. So I have a lot less to debug, okay? Um, but if I want to do, I, I write, uh, put print statements. Uh, Crystal provides you all kinds of nice things, especially for, for debugging. Uh, so let me show you here. I have an example where I have a single string and here I have a more complex data structure, okay? Doesn't really matter what is this. Is that more? It's, it looks like a hash or dictionary or whatever lang your language has. Actually, I think this is a named tuple, and inside it, there is a hash. Doesn't really matter. The, the point is that there, is, and then here is an array inside. That this is a, a multi-level data structure. Now, if I just put it out, it, and here I have examples with using puts for the name and puts for this person, and the output for the string is just a string. And for the person, this long, long line, that's pretty hard in the end to, to read. But um, Crystal provides these, uh, first of all, it provides this P letter, which I'm not sure I like because it's really hard then to search for and uh, get rid of. So I'm, I, I probably don't like this, okay? And don't remember, the, the, don't uh, recommend the P. It's slightly different. So I think this is the same output but for the string, it's, it puts the quotes around it. The more interesting one is the P exclamation mark and the P P exclamation mark. So the P exclamation mark would not only print out the value of whatever you put there, but also the name of the variable. So this is the actual output, okay? And this is what, what you normally, normally, well, if you put in print statements, then you would pr print out, uh, put the variable name and then, the value or the, again the variable to to include but here you don't need you just put in p exclamation mark and the variable name and in the output you will see the variable name and the output the variable name person and the output okay so i like it very much p p exclamation mark it had a i had a hard time to actually understand what is the difference between that and p and exclamation mark uh, for simple simple thing, there is no no difference. Here there is because this is the P one exclamation mark. It's still one row. Okay, uh, even though now you have this thing here. But if you do P P, then it will try to make it more readable. I still don't really like the the level of. The, I mean, I would probably prefer if this was, uh, if it looked like this basically. Okay. Um, if the, these key value pairs were different rows, but that you can improve because this is these these p, 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 uh, these three are macros, so we can play with that. Oh, by the way, yes. So the compiler of Crystal is itself written in Crystal, which is really nice because that means that you can start learning Crystal and then improving the compiler with the same language. You don't have to switch uh, languages. And um, so on. Okay. 
So these are the ones. Uh, actually, exclamation mark. Uh, this is what I when I started to freak out a little bit about Crystal. Uh, you can have you you will see question mark and exclamation mark at the end of function names. Sometimes of our various constructs. Uh, we'll get into them. Uh, but for function names, this is just part of the function. So the fact that we name call the function p exclamation mark is just because we like the exclamation part or the people who wrote it. Okay. Uh, you can also define functions with an exclamation mark as the last character of the of the function name. And it doesn't have to be any special meaning. Uh, but usually it's 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 good to have some special meaning. Uh, okay, comments after a hash mark, that's tough is comment. Okay, it doesn't matter where you put, if it's code, but if it's in hash mark, then it's a comment, it won't be executed. Code formatting, that's important. Uh, there is a tool called uh, Crystal has, uh, so Crystal comes with a bunch of tools. One of them is you invoke it by saying Crystal tool format, and it will go through all the directory structures below your current working directory, all the CRs files and reformat them according to the standard of Crystal, which I don't fully like because it has two space indentation, but uh, well, you can also run Crystal tool format check that would not change the files. It would just report yes or no, whether the all the formatting is done or whether there would be a change if you ran it without the check. This could be added, for example, into a pre-commit hook to make sure that people only commit a code that has that's well formatted. Or if you are less, uh, if it would be okay being less strict, then you could go and put it into your CI system. So once the person pushed out code, it will be checked and will tell the, the, the person, okay, sorry, you, you didn't, um, format your code, please do so. Uh, I, I prefer this one, I think. Uh, okay, type of is um, a function that will return the type of the specific um, object. So here we have a, a variable, I assign to a string to it. If I print out type of uh, the string, I get string, the word string. This is an integer, so we'll get int 32. Actually, there are all kinds of ints based on different sizes. Uh, floating point, this is a floating point number, specifically a float 64 bit. And true, this is a boolean value or bool. Okay, so that's uh, how actually I somewhere, I don't know where, but I have, uh, I put, uh, I put, should put on the slides. I just recently created a macro that would get and the name of um, a variable, it would print out uh, like P exclamation mark. It would do the P exclamation mark part and then also the type of that variable. So it's good even better for, for my debugging. So I don't have to write both of them. There are all kinds of compound uh, types, for example, an array here. Okay, and then when I ask it, what is it type of X, it will say it's an array of integers and the strings, because this array has at least one string and at least one integer. So that's going to be really interesting and fun um, to uh, that you define the, the types of your variables or that, as you can see, I don't have to define. Uh, Crystal automatically understands based on the values, what are the types, and then it won't let you do the operation if, uh, if it's incorrect on that type, okay? So let's say I would like to go over the values of X and for each one of them, I would like to print out the length, the number of characters in that value, okay? The size actually. And this is defined for strings, it's not defined for integers, okay? It doesn't have that, that, uh, that method. So if you have a loop that goes over this, the, the values, then by at com compile time, Crystal will notice that this array can contain both integers and strings. And for integers, that function is not defined. So the whole thing can't work, okay? And then you can, uh, so it will at compile time, find out all these problems, which is nice. 
This one is a tuple, okay? It's a immutable array, basically. Uh, this is a hash, okay? Looks quite similar to, to what, uh, well, to what's going on in Perl and Python, sort of. In Python, you call this a dictionary. It's the same thing, same idea. In this case, it says that this, this, this hash has a string as the key and integer 32 or string as the value. And this one uh, has the same idea, but it does, it does the name, a named tuple. Here you can see uh, an arrow, a fat arrow, and here you can see colon. And there are other ways uh, to, to define a, a name tuple, okay? But that's basically it. Okay, where are we here? Add numbers. Here, 20, slide 20. And I have a bunch of exercises at the end, but I guess that's, the, that's what we are going to do this today. So add numbers. So here I have two variables, two integers. I can put, add them together, put prints out, lovely. I can also put this one, this uh, puts out uh, and this way. So I interpolated X, Y, and Z into this, and then it will print it out. That's nice. What happens if I have two strings, uh, strings because they are in double quotes, but have numbers in them. Uh, if I add them together now, well, I get 22, two, 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 three, one, nine. So if they were stringify, uh, sorry, they were concatenated together because they are strings. So as you can see, the plus operation uh, is overloaded for the integers, for strings, and can be different for different types of, of whatever you like, okay? So you can uh, define that. Okay, what happens if you try to add two, two values, one of them being a string, another one is an integer, like here. One of them is an integer, the other one is a string, and I try to add them together. I get error, no overload matches with a string type, okay? So I can't add plus a string. And this is done in compile time, okay? Which is very nice. Again, uh, those, all those people who didn't like uh, the dynamic languages or had trouble with dynamic languages because uh, they found out about bugs uh, two weeks uh, after they published the code and, pro and it's pro in production. Well, a certain set of, of, these, uh, of these bugs can't exist in uh, crystal code. You can, you will find other types of bugs uh, to, to create, okay? I'll do. Okay, and of course it comes with a price, but uh, a price of more investment on your, on, on your side, but um, it's not that bad. Uh, okay, numeric operators. So we have two numbers and then you can, we have the mostly standard numeric operators, the plus minus multiplication exponent. So yeah, division that gives you a floating point and two slashes, which is a, it's called floor division. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. What does the crystal open classes? Can I extend in 32 plus with an a string param? So uh, you can say that some variable is either in 32 or string, uh, just as we saw it uh, earlier. And then uh, let's say in a function call, when you define that my function accepts in 32 or my function accepts string. Or you can say my function accepts in this place either in 32 or a string, okay? And then you can pass both of the, both values to this uh, function. I don't know if that's what you meant, okay? Uh, but keep explaining my, the question, please, if if, it, if I wasn't clear or if it, I didn't understand the, the the question. So two slashes is the is the floor division, so it will give you an integer. And percentage is the modulus, so the leftover, whatever. In 32, so there are all kinds of ints. Uh, so I just put it in 32, but this is basically methods on int. Uh, for example, you can have ups, it's an absolute number, or 
Oh, we get getting to this here, or even, okay? Uh, with a question mark at the end. So here we have this apps function that will return the absolute value of the answer. And on the other hand, we have this even question mark function or method that will return uh, true or false, whether this uh, answer, the value is an even number or an odd number. And now you could see, okay, what is this question mark doing here? So uh, as mentioned earlier with the exclamation mark, you can create methods or functions uh, uh, with any, uh, with, with, with like the regular names that you are usually used to in other languages, but you can also add the question mark at the end of the name. What I don't like is that actually Crystal doesn't care what kind of a function is that, whether it returns a Boolean or not. Um, you can just do that. So you can create easily create a, a method that would have a that would have a question mark at the end, but would return strings. I don't like it. Uh, I think the accepted way inside Crystal or in the language at least that if you have a question mark, that will return some Boolean some, uh, at the end of a method that would return some kind of a Boolean value. But I'm, I don't think there is a, like a fixed commitment to this uh, uh, idea, okay? And uh, there might or might not be a function which is called event, okay? So in case this, I guess there is no just event function, uh, but uh, in other cases, there might be a version, okay, maybe not. Uh, there, theoretically, you can have a version that has a question mark and a separate one that doesn't. And have no, they have nothing to do with each, each other. Okay, so it's just question mark can be an extra character. Okay, uh, there is also this method, the GCD or greatest common divisor. Uh, it will get, find the GCD of these two numbers and print that out or return that. On floating point, there are other methods or not, some are the same, some are different. So for example, the dot apps method exists on floating 60, float 64 as well. The round method, I think it doesn't exist on int because there's no nowhere to round, but there is on floating point. Event doesn't question mark, it's undefined. I'll put it here, okay? It doesn't actually, let's go back here. And uh, I said, the round doesn't exist. So let's see this one. It's called examples intro in 32. So let's see examples intro in 32. And let's put it this way, P exclamation mark, answer, answer, Nick dot, uh, what was this? I already forget it. Um, round right i wanted to round it round okay so what if i try to run this crystal okay so there is something to round it okay you can you can round you can round the number okay so it's uh, 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 i don't know actually what's the meaning of rounding an integer it's going to be a round, more round integer. No idea. Boots program name. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, in a second, we'll see this. Okay, so you can, the program name, this is a constant basically. Actually, constants are all the capital letters, uh, this variable names that start with a capital letter. So this is a system-wide con constant uh, that contains the name of the current executable. It's the same as, uh, what is, dollar uh, uh, zero in Perl and uh, what argv zero in, sysargv zero, I think in Python. So it is the name of the program. Anyway, you can put it up, print it out. So here is this, the program name CR. I can run it. Crystal, examples, intro, program name CR. And if I run it, it will tell me something, some interesting thing. So it just says, this is, this is the name of the program. Okay, because what happens is that Crystal compiles the program to be this temporary file. And this is now the name of the executable. And if, let me check, this is, this does this exist? 
Yeah, no such file, okay? Because it was uh, removed already, okay? But this was the same. But what happens if we build it? Build it and we can go X, Y, Z, let's say, okay? So this is now, it's called X, Y, Z. So if I run this X, Y, Z program, it will see that this is how it's called, okay? So it knows, uh, it, so during development, this doesn't make such sense, so much sense because it will give you just the name of a temporary file. But uh, when you execute it, and of course, if I rename it to ABC and now run it as ABC, then it will already know that it's called uh, ABC. Yeah, so in um, Ruby, uh, someone says that uh, in Ruby constants are just uh, just a convention, the uppercase in Crystal, it's uh, it's just that you can't reassign to a, to a constant as far as I know, but let's try this. So let me try this one, Crystal eval x equal to two and then uh, puts x and then x equal to three. Let's see what happens now, okay? Uh, already initialized constant, okay? So I just showed you two things now. Well, several things actually, that you can write one-liners in crystal by saying crystal eval and then in quotes or whatever you put your code and you don't have to have a file for that. You can separate the comma, uh, statements with semicolon and finally answering the question whether this uh, is allowed to reassign uh, a constant and no in crystal you can't reassign something which is starts with a capital letter because that's a constant okay yeah so so this program name uh, means um, the the path to the file and the uh, and it, it makes sense once you compile it, it makes less sense when uh, you are just running it the uh, crystal and name of the CR file. Command line arguments. Okay, so there is this uh, array, I guess, called argv, capital letters, uh, that contains whatever the, yeah, it's an array of string. Okay, that's, that's the cool thing here. Uh, uh, this is uh, whatever is, is on the command line. So it's called CLI uh, uh, CR. So let's run this. Examples, uh, intro, CLI CR. If I just run this, then I think nothing will happen. It will tell me that uh, there is an empty array and the size is zero. Okay, I lost my mouse. Here it is. Okay, uh, square bracket and zero. So this is what it says. This is puts our RV and then RV size. Okay, if I provide it one, two uh, parameters on the command line, then it will say that I have this array, one and two, it has two elements, and then we have this loop. So we have this loop and I'll go over this loop in a second that will go over the items and print out the argument uh, index and the value. And then uh, I also have this other condition just to, to, to show something else, okay? So, actually, I'm not sure why I'm showing the RV as zero there. Um, anyway, uh, so you can see that RV contains the, the command line parameters. Of course, if you'd like to, to uh, my name, of, that, that's gonna be three parameters, right? Uh, but if I put them in quotes, then the shell, that's just the shell uh, provides two parameters, two values to, to the crystal program. And then you can see there's only, there are only two. And the my name is a, is a single value. Okay, so what do I, we have here? We have this array that comes from the command line by crystal. On the array, I can put, say dot size that will return the number of elements. I can run over the elements like this. There have this, this array, and I say each with index. There are all kinds of things, these all kinds of methods on RG, all kind of eaches. Okay. One of them is just each, it will go over the all the values uh, of the uh, uh, array. But we want we here in this case, I wanted to have both the index and so the, the location and the value. And I don't like the fact that I'm using here I here. I'm sorry, I have to 
fix this, okay? Intro CLI, okay? I don't like, uh, I, I think many people use I, but I, I, I gave up on that, on the idea, okay? Uh, because um, it's very harder to search for it. Um, and uh, if I'm searching for X, it's gonna be easier. If I search for I, there are lots of places with an I, okay? And even if I, uh, look, I know I can just uh, search for the variable I, but even that is way to turn the string I. Anyway, so here, it, here we have argv each with index. So that will iterate over all the elements and call this block. And in the, in the block, the first thing between two pipes, I have the parameters that we go to get the assignment from the loop. And the first one is the value in this case. And the second one is, in, is the index. And then I can interpolate those values here into the, into the string. So that's how we ended up with argument zero was one, argument one was, was my, and argument two was name. And here it was my and name together. And the last one here is that, I don't remember why I put it this way. Um, yeah, probably what I wanted to do. Ah, okay, that is just, it's just set, print, printing out that this is the, the value argv zero. So, so I can check whether the, the size is more than zero and then I can pr print out the argv. Of course, probably this is the, the way we parse, uh, the, go over the elements of, of the argv. Of course, uh, you have libraries and we'll see them later get, that can uh, parse the, command line parameters, the dash dash something or single dash uh, parameters. But uh, you also have this low level thing that that uh, almost every language, I guess, have, have this. So this is what we have here. Early exit. Um, I, and the, the reason I'm showing you this slide, slightly strange uh, uh, things is because uh, I would like to get uh, to something usable as soon as possible, okay? Um, so the, the form the question whether the format tool converts the block definition uh, with, with a begin to a begin end uh, pair. Um, no, well, for that background, uh, there are, that you can have also blocks with begin and end, not just with curlies. And no, uh, I don't think that the format tool does this conversion. And neither, uh, there is a linter that I don't think I'll mention here at the now called Amoeba. And even that uh, do, doesn't complain about this one. Um, this is, I think, the recommended way to write this. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, early exit. So back to early exit. Um, and I need it because, well, it's easier to write some code uh, with this. So the function exit uh, can be called anywhere. And then if you don't give it a parameter, then it will exit with default uh, with zero. And if you give it a number, uh, then it will, the exit code will be set to that number. And if in case you don't know what, the, what to do with the exit code. So after you program run, you can check what was the exit code of the last command. Uh, on Linux, that will be in the dollar question mark environment. On Windows, it will be the percentage error level percentage uh, variable. And uh, you need this because uh, that's how from the outside, you can actually officially decide whether something was successful or failure, zero success and anything else is a failure. And if you have a CI system, for example, then a normal CI system, some are not that, uh, then uh, it will just look at the exit code and based on just the exit code will decide whether your CI job uh, was successful or if it failed. Some, I, 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 I know some CI systems that will try to parse the output and yeah, that's, uh, that's not the right thing to do. Even though sometimes maybe you also want to parse that. Anyway, um, this is, I think, should be an exercise, but it's not. Um, here I'm trying to get the, the, the width and the height of a rectangle and print out the, 
area and the circumference of it. Not uh, very complex. The point is a couple of points here. One of them is will we expect on the command line, right, two numbers, two values at least, okay? Um, uh, so the first thing I check is, is the size of the RV is equal to two or more precisely here, I'm checking whether it's different from two, whether it's zero, one, or maybe three or more. And neither of these is good. So if the user doesn't provide me exactly two values, then I tell the user that usage, name of the program, and then A and B, and then more text explaining what I expect from the user. And then I exit with some number different from zero. So if you, when you run this program, intro rectangle, example, intro rectangle, uh, rectangle, and not edit, run, crystal. By the way, uh, okay, so I already have a, a short alias for crystal CR. For a while, I thought I will shorten it for cry, but CR is shorter. Uh, anyway, so you can see I ran this and it, will, it told me uh, you have to run the same thing, but uh, with two values, with some more explanation. And then I can run with more values and it gives me the, the results. Okay, so here I take the array and I assign, and this is like the multiply, multiply, uh, multiple assign, I think it's called. So when you take a, an array and then each value of it goes into one of the values, one of the variables here, then uh, these are strings. Even if you provide them numbers as I did here on the command line, it's, they're still strings uh, because they are coming from the outside world. So you have to convert them into some kind of a numerical value. Dot 2f will, will convert them to floating point. So I convert both of them to floating, floating point and then multiply them, and that's the area. And the circumference is, again, giving the, converting them to floating point, and then adding them together and multiplying by two. And that's it, okay? So it, this is how you get values from the command line, and this is how you complain that uh, your user didn't provide the values that they did it. Uh, false and true values. Okay, so unlike in most of the other uh, programming languages, in Crystal, only false and nil and the null pointer are considered to be false. The empty string zero and everything else are true. Okay, in other programming languages, it's a bit different. So here I have a bunch of values, an array of values. I go over each one of them. You remember, this is the, the each that doesn't have the index. Uh, so I get only one value for here. And then I say, if the val, so if that's true, then put out, print out the value and say it's true. Otherwise put out the value and say it's not true. And true values. And this is, the, this is how it looks like. So I'll have to add this into uh, the uh, file. So I'm creating this intro, true values out. By the way, if you see lots of these dot out files, that's just for me for the slides. Now I'm going to, I'm going to show you the slide creation as well. Intro and it's say true value. So I'll just include the out file as well. And if now I regenerate the slides, well, I have to push them out, uh, so I won't do that. Then it will, re or will already include this output in the slide, okay? So, and probably I shouldn't put that, I should use, no, it's okay, okay. So it says true, zero is true, zero is true. Why do I say it twice? One of them is the, num zero, uh, uh, integer and the other one is the, the string zero. So these are these are considered true. Everything is true here, okay? Except the false and what is here, nil. Okay, that's the that's the, that's the thing. 
Um, just for fun, there are these libraries, so you can see mass, double colon, and pi, or tau, or e, and you have all these uh, numbers, special numbers. Yeah, question about pointers. I don't know about pointers yet. I will get there at one point in the in the course. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, reading from uh, standard input. Um, yeah, this is the, the like the two major input ways of input uh, at the beginning, either on the command line with argv or I asking the user and getting the answer. Uh, uh, in the standard input. So you print out a question, then you call gets, and then you pr print it out. And sort of this works, gets CR, let's see. And uh, it asks me something, what is your name? My name is Fu and I am Fu. Okay, and what if I print, uh, run it again? and I press enter with, well, my name is uh, uh, nothing. Okay, and what happens if I run it again? And now you don't see it because, well, maybe you see my hand, but I, you don't see my keyboard. Now I'm going to press control D. Okay, uh, and uh, it just say the same, hello, how are you? Okay, um, that's all the same. The problem is that gets will return. Let me try to do this. Okay, let me edit. Let, let me try to edit this one and see. So what is, well, it shouldn't be name now. Okay, that should be something else. Okay, let's, let's. Examples, intro, gets, number, okay. Let's try that we want, we would like, what if we would like to get a number? So I create a new example. What, uh, give me a number, okay? Give me a number. And that should be an exclamation mark, okay? And then uh, here we have just a variable, which we call number. And then we would like to put the number and also, correctly, and I also would like to plus number plus one. Okay, that's it for now. What happens if I run this crystal? So what happens is that crystal will refuse to run because it will say uh, undefined method plus for nil. Compile type, compile time type is string or nil. Um, so what we have here is that this gets function, it can get actually a string, not a number here, actually, it's not even a number. So it's not, well, I should change this, this example, just get, get, give me a string and, and concatenate to another string, okay? Um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll change that later on. Uh, because this, it's also with the same, the same with strings, uh, I think. Shall we? Okay. Uh, the point is that uh, if I press Control D, then this gets will get a nil. It won't get an empty string. It will get a nil because it's end of. It's like end of file, okay, or end of input. Uh, and the plus operation is not defined for nil. And so Crystal doesn't let me do this because there is a possibility that the user will press Control D and then this variable, which now I call number, gets nil, which is undefined or undef or null or whatever in other languages. Uh, none, okay. Uh, and and but then the plus operation is not defined, and then Crystal won't know what to do runtime so it won't just it doesn't let you uh, run anything and this is the time that i should show you how to do something how to fix this and i don't have here oh, oh where is it uh okay let me try to find it gets 
Yes, gets not nil. So let's try to do this. Uh, I'll, I'll have to find this example, but let's see other gets not nil. This is the file example other get not nil. Okay, so uh, example other get not nil. So you can also uh, ask x gets. And you can also ask gets dot not underscore nil exclamation mark. I really, really don't like that it look the, the way that it, 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 how it looks like. Anyway, this gets will only be ready to accept. So it won't accept uh, nil as input. So you won't, well, you can press still control D, but that will raise an exception that it can't handle it. Okay. I guess that's how it, it will, will happen, right? So what if I run this code now? Crystal. And I don't have a prompt. So let's control D, okay? So it, it gives me an unhandled exception. Okay, of course I need to handle that exception if I want to, but this uh, will make sure that uh, further code will never get the nil. Of course, there's this, this other thing here is just showing me uh, whether the, the attribute is nil or not. I'll have to move this slide earlier. So I, ha I have it this in, in this explanation. So we were here in the, in the gets uh, that you can get uh, anything, including a nil. Crystal play. Okay, so I, I won't be able to show the other things. I think I can do this crystal play. Oh, and it's more than an hour. So it's uh, it opened uh, it opens a server on port eighty eighty, where I can run code in crystal. Okay. So I haven't tried this much. I played a little bit with it, so I don't know how uh, convenient it is to run it because, because the compilation is, is still slow. So I'm not sure how, 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 how good is this, but enjoy trying, trying it. There is also other tools for interactive uh, environments. Uh, and there is a, did I add this now? I don't remember. Uh, there is a new REPL that was just announced uh, during the conference. I'll have to add, add these and, and, and explore them and show them uh, other time. Crystal one-liners, I showed you this actually, uh, that crystal eval, and then you can write some string and that will be ev uh, evaluated automatically. Uh, just a quick look into the random uh, generation of uh, crystal because Actually, no, we don't need this for the exercises yet, so uh, we can skip that, yeah. But uh, if it's already here, then, well, there is the random.rand that will give you a random, a pseudo-random, remember, that's just not real random. A pseudo-random number between zero and one, and round six, that will return you an integer between one and six. Zero and six, yeah, six not included. Um, and uh, actually I have to, don't take that, uh, take, don't take my word for that. I have to check exactly what run six means. Um, and that's it uh, for, I think, uh, this chapter. And that's, that was an hour, more than an hour. So I'm going to stop the video now. I hope that you enjoyed. And uh, if you're watching the video, uh, the recorded video, then go and uh, like the channel, like the video, follow the channel, whatnot, so you will be able to see more of these uh, upcoming videos. If you are here in live, uh, then here are the exercises. Um, and we are going to stop now the recording, and then you'll be able to also talk and do the exercises. And I'll try and I'll be around trying to help you both with the set setup if you need it, if you need it, or with the with the exercises. They are not very complex. The basic idea of here, the first one is just to make sure that you have your environment so you can run the hello world. And then there are a couple of these 
rather simple exercises, printing hello world, hello name, uh, calculating the area of a circle, primarily to, to, to get you used to write a little bit of, of a crystal uh, calculator here, standard input and arg v. Uh, there is, this is already a getting uh, start to be a little fun exercise uh, where you ask the user what is their age and tell them if they are above uh, the legal drinking age and um, first do it with the US because that's strange uh, and then you actually there is a link here to the Wikipedia page where you can find out about each country what is the age limit and then you can create this whole code uh, that will get uh, a, an age and um, country name and tell that whether the user the person can uh, drink in that country and uh, that's uh, about this uh, chapter so thank you for for being here and uh, thank you for what if you're watching this video then thank you for watching and then see you next time um, bye bye for now